There you go, Lulu. Okay, fine. All right, that's good. That looks real good. Okay. All right, well, Mr. French, you know what I did? I uh, went and uh, I went and listened to the uh, tapes that uh, Alice Cornelison made with you a couple of years back. Uh -huh. She was writing her book, and uh, yeah. Uh, well, when he if he moves, when we set him. You have to follow him. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Giving him just a little nose room, you know, in my direction. Just okay. a little nose room in my direction. Yeah, you got to stay with him. Okay. Um, but they're going to be a hard man for you to stay in one position all the time. No, don't. Just, you don't yeah, worry about it. You stay comfortable. Job. Oh. It's my job to follow you. You no, just stay comfortable. As long as you're sitting in the chair, we'll get you. Right. <laughs> but um, what we're going to talk about is pretty much the same the same things that uh, Miss Cornelison talked with yeah. uh, talked with you about, about uh, your family and about the land here and about the, the, all the history that goes with it and whatnot. Uh, let me start by asking you something about... Uh, about uh, Sarah Jane Powell Dorsey. Who that was my great grandmother. Huh? That's who the place was built for. The house was built for her when she set free from slavery. Now she was a slave? Yeah, my great grandmother was a slave. Yeah. How'd she come into this land in the house then? Well, see, all her sisters and brothers back in old days were sold to New Orleans. And so the man had them. He wanted to keep her because she seemed to be such a nice person to get along with. And after she sold all her family and mother and all to uh, New Orleans, she got dissatisfied. And he told her she was staying it and make herself contented. He was build a she to build this house. Hmm. So, so who actually built the house? Who did the work? Oh, uh, I don't know who did the work, but the man had her with who had her. Who she was a slave owner with Hood, Stephen Hood. But who built the house? I don't know. Was his name Stephen Hood or Thomas Hood? Thomas Hood, that's right, you Thomas Hood, yeah. Yeah, Thomas Hood. Now, who was Thomas Hood? He was one of the first county commissions of Howard County, and he owned land in Lisbon Hill and Sykesville. And, and so he was, he was your grandmother's master, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Now, why was it that uh, her brothers and sisters were sold to New Orleans and she wasn't? Because I really don't know. Because in those days they sold them, and I really couldn't, they couldn't really say. But I, she was the best one of the easiest one to manage of the group. So he just decided he to keep her to work for him. And if she stayed there, wife, all of mother and father all was sold to New Orleans, she got dissatisfied. And he figured if he would give her this ground. The logs in this house were cut off of this ground, and that, that she, you know, and she would get a consent, so she did it. And she stayed there until she died. I think she, when she died, she was around about 96. Did you ever know her? Did you remember well, her? Well, sure I know her. I was four years old when she died. Is that, you remember her then? Yeah. Wow. What kind of work did she do on purpose? Now, I couldn't tell you that. I really couldn't tell you that what kind of work she did. Well, I imagine she worked in the house. I really don't know. And and who was uh, who was her husband? Alfred Dorsey married her. Alfred Dorsey. Uh -huh. And what kind of work did he do? Did he? I don't remember ever seeing him. He died when my mother was eight years old. Hmm. Yeah, do you know what uh, ever became of her sisters and brothers that were sold? No, I really don't. Because hmm. I, mean, I never heard of any more of them. And see, like she lost contact with them. Oh. Wow. It's hard to imagine today, isn't it? Yes, it is. Back in those days, you know, they didn't keep back of records, so anything like that could, you know, taking place there. Mm. And probably, just like me, some of them could still be in New Orleans. I guess Because so. I was in Louisiana, you know, was at Fort Belvoir. When I was at Fort Belvoir, yeah, Fort Belvoir. Yeah, I ran across a several pals that there were from New Orleans within service, but well, I don't, well, there was any relation that I don't know. I see. Um, when, when your grandmother was freed, do you know what year that was? This house was built in 1861, so she must have been set free long that time. And then, was she married at the time? I really couldn't tell you when she was married. But she must have been because they built this house without being married. She wouldn't need any place. Being married because she really stayed where she worked. So I imagine she was married that time. That makes sense. And how old was she when she passed on? 96. 96. Oh. Um, let me ask you a little more about the slavery times, what you, you may know about them. Uh, were, there, uh, were there any other 
former slaves around the area whose names you might remember? No, I don't see all I remember what she told me and my mother told me. But I can't, I don't remember any. Was there one fellow by the name of uh, Asbury Snowden? Yeah, uh, I know Asbury Snowden, but I don't want him in the neighborhood because he used to, when he passed, he used to live down near the Glenwood, a place called Glenwood, on Santa Wolf's place. But I don't know what he was in this neighborhood then or not, but I know last verse so, and he stayed there until he passed. But he was in slavery too. How about a woman named uh, Liza Summers? She lived right at, let's see, one, the second house from here. The Red Cross Road on right in front of the church. And I know her well. But you didn't know her? I said, I did know her well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, would, would she uh, ever serve as a slave? If she did, she moved here from North Carolina. Oh, I see. So more North Carolina, so I really don't know. Okay, let me ask you a little bit about uh, what kind of uh, what kind of work have you done in your life? You said you worked for the railroad. Yeah, I worked for the railroad and construction. Uh, in fact, all the work I did was for construction work and railroad. Farm work, I know, you, you know which, but farm works I do. Outside of the garden. Because what is too long hours, the money wasn't large enough, so I took that up. Railroad and construction work. Tell me all about working for the railroad. What kind of work did you do? Well, I worked as a trackman, I worked as a, a qualified flagman, licensed flagman, a heavy equipment operator, a licensed heavy equipment operator. I worked as foreman. I didn't ask if I went to service. And being old men, I got so I didn't want to be over nobody. I'd rather work and be bald. And uh, the one that worked you out I had, see, I had a bad, I got hurt on the river, got my spine messed up. And I had a spine operation, and every once in a while, it would go down my legs. So it went down to my legs in 70. And uh, the assistant engineer asked me, would I go in the office with the supervisor? It was in October. I said, yeah, because it's cold. <laughs> so I went in the first week. Al was sitting around and did nothing. The second week, he said, Al, they always call me Al and have a doing so and so. And the third week, I was doing all this work. Doing all the foreman's work? I was doing all the supervisor's work. <laughs> he ride them down the road from hot shop to hot shop. I mean, I signed all time sheets, put his name on, he never signed a time sheet. If any material be ordered, I ordered a work train. And if the members supposed to make overtime, I'd tell them well to make overtime or not. Something happened, go to this place and that thing. So I did everything. And he wrote them down the road from Hot Shop, Hot Shop, eating hamburger and drinking coke. Was, was he a white man? Yeah. He was from West Virginia. And you doing all his work for him? Yeah, because, see, he, he figured I could do, do the work, and he didn't have to bother with it. He'd tell me, he said, Al, I'm going to sit and the place. If any of the mail comes in, open up. If you got to call anybody, call us. you got to do it. Whatever you do, go ahead and do it. And the vengeance, they agreed to it. When I, uh, when I went back as heavy equipment operator, the same system vision asked me to go in there, because I'm back I was a heavy equipment operator, he didn't want me to go because I was doing his work. A uh, general supervisor come down on that territory, he didn't know it. If he, what if he wanted to work trade it, he couldn't order it. I had to order it for him. He couldn't get no track or nothing because he wasn't qualified for didn't know the territory. Hmm. Well, you didn't get paid for doing his work. That's one reason to come out. When I come out of heavy equipment operator, I got paid as a heavy equipment operator, but then I was getting paid as a track one doing his work. Every Monday morning, you see, he had f five different gangs. I'd check all those time sheets, regular time sheets, overtime time sheets, work reports, material reports, and sign his name, send them into the engineer. He never bothered. If he wanted to order his material and stuff, like a switch, rail, spike, both, whatever you want, said, Al, sit and sit there the book, sit and sit thing, all that had to be audible code, you do it. And I did it. He didn't even check them. I had to put them in the mail, send them on to the engineer. He had a good snap of it. I did. Mm -hmm. now, you also worked as a, what, a drill operator? Yeah, I worked for a construction worker. I was a drill operator, a construction operator. On 40 there, y'all don't know you you familiar, Boba County and Howe County line, all that rock up and down the bank. My brother and I drilled that rock in there. Uh, okay. mm. But that was a construction job? Yeah, for construct, young Paul construction. That was in 36. Oh, so that's considered skilled labor. Yeah. 
Now I was on over here to North Branch where I lived the dam is before they put that dam over there with the bridge over there and cut a road through. We were over there drilling rock. But when the minute we got off of rock drilling rock, we had to come home because of skilled work. We couldn't do labor work because it was out of the county. Oh, so you couldn't go out of the county and do... Uh, in those days, yes, you did skilled work. But now if you get a job, you can go anyway. But in those days, you couldn't. I see. Okay, so if, if you were skilled labor... Yeah, a drill operator skilled labor. Yeah, and you, then you... So if you went out of the county, you had to be skilled labor. You could get skilled labor, do that, yeah. You couldn't be unskilled labor. No. Why not? Because it, 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 they, they were taking a job for the men in their own county. You see, I'm in Howard County, I was going over in Baltimore County. I see. So you're taking their unskilled jobs away from them. Yeah, that's right. So as long as skilled labor, we were skilled, we could do it. I see. How about your father? What kind of work he do? My father did a little bit of everything. I mean, he worked the railroad. He was, uh, which is one thing I never would able to do, he was a baller. He fought a baller. He was licensed to work, he was licensed to qualify to go to New Orleans to uh, fall an engine. And my mother wouldn't move there. So that's how come we didn't get there. But later I got there in service. And he was, he was, uh, he cooked, he house clean. I guess you would call us to the, to the governor, uh, the governor Wolf. He was, I guess, his valet because he shaved him, gave him a bath, and went around when he was lecturing in and all. Because Santa Wolf was kind of a little disagreeable man to get along with. My father would argue along with him and get along, but they, they traveled together head and head. I get you in your time. You heard of Santa Wolf, haven't you? I certainly have. Yeah, right down the road there, down in Glenwood, he was Santa twice. Is that right? What mm -hmm. years was that? You know? Really, I, I, I really, I couldn't tell you now, but since I could remember, but I couldn't tell you what the years it was, and I'd tell you where you really could get that information from, be in Elko City. Yeah. I don't want to be Carol Building or George Howard Building. One of them would have that material in there when he was. Senator Wong. It was the one of the time it had to be with, it had to be in the 30s. It was the last time he was in the 30s. Now he's the United States Senator, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do, so did he take your... I mean, Santa, he was state Santa Merle, state oh, of Merle. Yeah. So he took your father down to Annapolis with him? Yeah, be like he would go around different places, you know, with the electioneer, and he didn't want to travel by himself. He took him along as company. And he used to shave and do everything. So, oh, he cooked for me, did everything. But he had, he had, uh, Santa Wolf had a wife, but him and my father got along pretty good together. Was your father a good provider? Oh yeah. You, you see how you see I'm up, I'm up to seventy one years old. So he must have. Been. That's one thing I say. We never had to want for nothing. My father worked. My father get up in the morning and say, I'm going to get a job. He come back. He had a job. He didn't mind working. My father was a good worker. He worked enough. My mother never had to go out to work. And he raised four children. And she never had to go out to hit a liquor work to help to survive for the family. He took care of his own family. And nobody helped him. He took care of his own family. Because a lot of times I'm told that's a working man. In those days, you had to walk back and forth to work. And the average man, you said in his day, the man worked, walked farther, and the average man worked in a day. He'd get up in the morning, leave home at 4 o'clock in the morning and walk. And which one, 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 we didn't always live here. We once lived though, on Sykesville Road. And he walked from over there to Glen Elk in the morning back at night to work. He used to feed a bailer. It's a long way. Yeah. But that he, he just showed people that he was supply, he was to take care of his own family and wouldn't depend on nobody else helping him. And he did it. So your mother never had to go out and work? Yeah, she didn't go out to work. Yeah. No, really, my mother never had to lick a work out. Then who was the disciplinarian in the family? She was. She run the family. Whatever she says, went right or wrong. Never did. Was she strict? Well, she did. She was. She was strict. What I say today, I wish some of these boys come down had a mother like I did, and they had no teeth or no nothing. They wouldn't be giving them uh, give a saying anything get back to her. No, you didn't. You can moment you want her, but I don't care what she had in her hand. She let you have it. Rolling pin, frying pan, under anything. She was rough. I tell you, it was so rough. 
My my brother was small, which is past now. He died last June. He kept crying for that's the day. You talk about a wood stove. We had a wood stove. He kept on crying for bread and butter. She told him to shut up. He wasn't against her. He kept on crying. You know what you did? Picked him up and set him right on the hot stove. She did that. My brother died with the prints on him there, and you couldn't pay my brother eat butter. No, sir. Talking about people talking about children now. God, though, she wasn't raw. <laughs> and meal time, she said, on Sunday, my brother and I played baseball. She'd tell you on Sunday, I'm going to eat since this time. If you're there, you eat. If you don't, that's it. If we weren't here, you didn't get nothing to eat. You didn't go in there. You had Dale's stage, you had ice ball. You didn't go in the ice ball. Said, I told you what I was going to eat. And I meant that. And that was it. I'm glad I did have a mother like that. And you had to buy your own soap, your washcloth, your towel. That you bought everything you own. She didn't supply you with nothing. You bought it. And that's a good way to be. It teaches you to be very self-reliant. Yes, right. That is it. You had to be. When she said no, that was no. You didn't change her. No was no. Wow, that's yeah. not too many folks that way anymore. No, it's not. It would be now, but in fact, when I come along, children were nothing like they are today. Children don't have no respect for nobody now. But God don't know that you did. And she was a woman like it. If somebody seen my brother and I said, I seen Jordan Titchen Sinterbrook, she didn't tell him no. She believed that. If we come here at night and seen her, she was still up, we know somebody had been and told us something. And she wouldn't know what you're doing there. You didn't, she didn't say, no, not only my boys weren't there. Uh-huh, I'll see them when they come in. That's one thing I give her credit. She never told nobody they didn't see them, they were wrong. Until she found it out. She made a lot, sometimes she let it go two or three days, you think she forgot it. No, you did. Then she'd bring it up. How about you, where you were this time? And right then, it comes a sentence person being here. Let's see. When did she pass on? And, uh... Wait a minute. Well, I know that 55, 55. June the tw uh, June the twentieth. No, May the twentieth, and and, uh, and uh, uh, 55. And my father died within a, a month behind. My mother died in J J May. He died in June. Wow. And both were sick same time. My father had a stroke, and he was helpless. And my mother was sick. And my this sister and my sister passed took care of them. And at night, I told them I would take care of my father because he allowed to wake up any time in the morning and say he wanted to bath, rub him back a hole, and put powder on him, and I would do it. And any time he said, I can walk, I'd get him up, but he couldn't. I don't care what time, because I, I, I can walk. I said, okay, I'm going to get you rid of him. i stop whatever I do and get him up. And I sat right in a big chair in, with him, for 11, from October up until June. Went to bed and laid down 11 nights during that time. Slept in a chair and worked every day. Sometimes I was working seven days a week at night. Because people say, how you do? I said, you did the same thing by me. And my two sisters took care of my mother. So it sounds like you had a very close family. Huh? It was. It was. Now, I have a niece just with you. I went over to the hospital just, just came in just before you. A little more, I wouldn't have made it. She, little can't find out what is, of a, was it a heart or not, because she was over there in June. So, Monday morning, yesterday morning, she taken sick and rushed into the hospital, and they can't find out what's wrong. She's in kind of near care. And I went over there and see her just a while ago, and she said she had a spell again this morning. And they sit, can't find out what's wrong with her. Hmm. And she's right there in the continent of care. Hmm. But she's just laughing, talking, sitting up, looking at her, but it's something wrong, but I don't know what. Yeah, sometimes you just can't find it. That's right. Yeah. Let me ask you about uh, about your schooling. What kind of schooling did you get? Where'd you go? I only went there, I only went up here to school that's tore down where that bus is sitting there. It just be Cooksville Elementary School. I just went there to the seventh grade. Then in this community, it didn't have any school for colored children. And I could have went to Baltimore State, my sisters, my mother, sisters, and brother. She asked me, what you want to do, Alba, go to school or work? I said, work. I went there and worked a half a day and found out my mistake. I worked up until I had to come off on disability high blood pressure. Because I had the opportunity to go to school, and I preferred work. And I stuck to it. So you never went to high school? Uh-uh. It wasn't no high I had to go to Baltimore. We never had no high school yet until back here in... 
seven, I guess it was. We never had no high school in this in Harold County. And we had to went to Baltimore. And do you regret that at all? I regret I'm not going to school, but I don't regret to learn how to work. Because right now, I guess I've been still out there working regularly now if I hadn't had that high blood pressure and it kind of affect my heart. But I do have a little job now because I go to the senior citizen and I work with them. And I just take it on in August. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice would you give young people today about education, about working hard? Well, I, if, I, if I had the, the right to today, the day they would listen at me, I to go for school and forget to work. Because now, David, they said you can't get nothing. Now, I was talking to a young girl yesterday, she's 23. I was surprised. I was up to the paper box. I was surprised to talk to her that the way she wants to go, said she can forget marriage, she wants to go to school. I said, you get the right idea. So she's finished high school. She's finished college, in fact, and then for June, she's going to law school. I said, most of the young girls, all they think about is getting married. I said, but you get the right idea. I said, you'll be a long while before I'll get a chance to talk to another young girl. It's, it's eager to go to school and get an education. And yet you did the opposite. You went to work first. Yeah, and I worked too. Oh. Until I, they put me off on the... Uh, oh, I know what I want to ask you about. Um, uh, how important was the, was the church in your life where you've grown up? I've worked in church ever since I was knee high to a duck. I'm still working in it. And just John Church just since John Church a year ago last January. What happened? I had two attacks and both times I fell out in church. So I said to myself, the good Lord must be telling me something. Why would each time it could happen on the road, drive an automobile, anything? But I happened in church. The first time it happened, I was passing this collection plate, and everything got dizzy in front of me. And I hit somebody's plate and walked and caught hold of the bench, and they caught me. And I passed out, and they took me to the hospital and checked me. And they couldn't find anything wrong with the rule of heart attack or stroke. So they sent me to my family doctor. Said the only thing he could tell me was time for me to faint. That's all they told me. That's all I can tell you. That's the only thing they think. So like I was telling my niece today, I said, maybe it's the same thing. They couldn't find anything wrong with me. And one other Sunday, I was at church about three months after, went down to the bathroom. I had a trouble. My leg was giving me trouble from my spine. And I was going down. The same fellow that caught me before, he was helping me down there. He said, Al, you're right. I said, nothing wrong with me. And just that quick, I'd gone. Hmm. Very cool. quick. Now, have you always uh, belonged to uh, Mount Gregory? All my life. I mean, I have worked it, but I just still became a member of the last year. Uh -huh. But I worked it all my life. Uh -huh. What kind of uh, what kind of activities do you remember being sponsored by the church? Oh, they had a, now they have like had pro different kinds of programs back when I was going to school, in which it was functioned by the school. But they just have lots of activities and dialogues and things there. When well, they had a school here. But the church still has a program, like they have now that stuff. Uh, Good Friday, they got a sacred play coming up for Good Friday, which they have one every Good Friday in the day, they have a dinner. And at night, they have these plays. And right now, we got a good program. We're in the progress of building a church, and we have started a, a building fund. And I'm right acting in that, having fans for that. Which back here, in, it's, it's in May. I'm going to have a state rally to help to raise money for that. And we have had dinners to raise money to, towards it. And then right up there, I guess you see that recycling box. Another fellow and I got that about gathering paper. And we almost, we started in April. This is almost the fifth box. By next week, we'll have, we'll have that box full of, of paper. Do you remember things like in the old days, like church socials? Yeah, you used to have picnics and things in those old days at the church, but in which you don't have it nowadays, the picnics and things. And you used to have, which you just started again, uh, revivals, they have them. And they used to have camp meetings, but they don't do that anymore in the churches. I remember. How come they don't do it anymore? I don't know why. It's a new generation. We got wiser. And uh, most of the people, young people now, don't have too much time for church work. If you give them a radio 
or something like that. Or television, that's all right, but there ain't too much of church work. What do you think about that? I think it should be more church work myself. But right now we have several young girls. What? I guess we don't have at least a half a dozen young men church. Well, I'll but tell you, you one thing, you sure have one heck of a choir. They're wonderful. I don't know which one. See, we have two. We got three choirs. We got a senior choir and the um, community singers, and we have a mass blend choir. We have three different choirs up there. Oh, gee, I don't know which one I saw that day. Do you remember? I oh, wait, I'm trying to figure. I that must have been that must have been the community singers because I think I was around this. No, that was the uh, that was the uh, mass blend choir because it was the third Sunday had anniversary. Uh -huh. Yeah. They were they were wonderful. Just yeah, they're all, they all home, people around here. Yeah. yeah. And what's the name of the young man who, uh, who was leading them? Oh, Winfield Parker. Yeah. He was wonderful. Yeah. He, he sang, too. Yeah, he does, yeah. Oh, he's a wonderful voice. Good while ago, you may have heard it. He used to have an oyster and used to be, uh, uh, was called Whitty Parker. And he gave that up and was now working with the church. He's, he's still here with y'all. Oh, he? yeah, yeah, he's still with us. Okay. Yeah. I, I had the pleasure to talk with him after that. Uh, yeah, see, he, this is his home here, but now he lives in Columbia, and he drives a bus now for Hurley Ass there here to Glen Oh, yeah? Yeah, oh, he drives right. a bus down there now. Nice, nice young man. Yeah. Nice. Uh, tell me about something I believe you were involved with years ago. Uh, what, was the, uh, what was the Starlight Club? Well, that was a club to raise money for church. There was a, like church needed something, instead of going to the church treasure, the Star Lake Club would get to have uh, have different affairs to raise money for it. Yeah, I, about, oh, I guess I was around about 10 years old then, because that was back in the 20s. What kind of things did you raise money for? I like the lights. Now, the, the lights in church now, the lights in church now, the Star Lake Club put them in. The first piano the church ever had, the Star Lake Club, that anything the church needed, they would have a fan to raise money for it. Now we have another organization up there, which is the Methodist Men, and we do a lot of things for the church. We put fans in, and that didn't satisfy the people, so then we put air conditioning in. That's part of the way it satisfied. The Star Lake Club did the sale. I mean, the Methodist Men did the sale. Then we uh, redid the basement, the kitchen, and the dining room man, the Methodist man did it. The president of the man said, let's pat on the, the dining room right. That was on one Monday night. Next Monday night, we started. Let me finish it. Because the pastor then, we had a man here. He wasn't too satisfied with it. He told us when it was dedicated to church, you all did a fine job. You didn't mention it to me. And we did. We went on and did it. Oh, that's, mm. so, so they're called essentially the Methodist men now? Yeah, the Methodist men say we have a, a Methodist men say only men belong to it now. And we do lots of work in the church. What do you think of uh, Reverend Smith? Well, I tell you, too, for a woman, I think she can. How do you learn her? Somebody oh. told you about her. No. Oh, that's something. I, I think for a woman, I think she's wonderful. Because I called her yesterday afternoon and told her about my niece being in the hospital. The day, the 4, 12 o'clock, Ramona told me she had been there. She's wonderful for a woman, I think. And I think most everybody likes her. Bill, you see, this is the first church she ever had. And Mal Gregor really works good with her, and she works good with Mal Gregor. That's great. I had the pleasure to speak with her on the phone, yeah. and she was delightful to me. Yeah, the thing of it is that she knows like somebody in Mal Gregor, some of the family, and some of their relatives get sick, or go to the hospital, she'll go and visit. That's very mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. She's very, very, very nice. Yeah, she was awful nice for my brother. See, my brother belongs to law. But I asked her about going down to having prayers with him. She went. She went back and forth to the hospital. She was at the wake in the film. I mean, she wasn't at the wake. She was at the film also. She was good so far. Uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, she's very nice. I yeah, she is. She's with that. her again mm. uh, real soon because I want to come out to Mount Gregor and get some more pictures of the church. Yeah. To to you. Just let her let know the time you oh, yeah. coming. Oh, yeah, I sure will. Let me, let me ask you, too, about, uh, let me ask you about Columbia. What do you think about Columbia? Well, I tell you the truth, Columbia is all right, has to give a lot of people work. But on the western part of Howard County, Columbia has made it rough for them. 
because the way they think they want, it's no use getting their ass nuts for nothing because they got enough people down there to do it themselves. But it has helped out Howard County a great deal. It give people a place to live and people work. But it just make it hard us run our tax and everything up. Oh, yeah, I guess so. But Howard County was coming out this small until Columbia Depot was uh, built. You want to pay right now? And you take all down there, all those disposable plants and stores and things they have in Columbia now, trucking places or something. It really has helped Howard County. I know one time that you go down in Jessup, you could look all over and see woods and say, now you can't see nothing. I went down there, went down there with my cousin back in the spring. I didn't even know where it was and built up Jessup so. Because I have to put that railroad in down there, that disposable plant and all down in there. But it really has grown. Yeah, this whole county has grown. Columbia has had a big hand in doing that. Yes, right. Because, you know, one time there you get it was 175, you want to register it on through Jessup. But God, don't, you don't go on a different road now before you get to Jessup. Because I went down there and I asked, I said, where are you going now? We had to go back over hit number one before we go going to Jessup. And where you used to go, Mr. on Jessup at one little way across the Policeburg. But you don't anymore. It's almost all Columbia. Yes, it is. Columbia, see, Columbia really has grown. What do you think about the kind of people that Columbia has attracted? Well, I couldn't say too much about that because I'm not too familiar. But the only couple families I may know down there, and the families I know has moved from this part down there. But the first the people in Columbia, I, I don't think I know of a couple people that moved into Columbia I didn't know didn't move from this part of Howard County. Because Columbia is such a large place, you get that down and you lost. Now, yesterday I was down to uh, Florence Bain, the uh, citizen, senior citizen place. I was down there. I had to go down there to a staff meeting of the senior citizen. But that's the only part I know about Columbia is up there to uh, mm -hmm, Joseph Square. But over the other parts, there's Sharp and Center all. I don't know them all at all. Tell me, um, years ago, in this area around here, where where would you where would you do your shopping for food and clothes and things like that? Well, c food. They had little stores here, there, with one out the Cooksville right down here, and one down in Glenwood with stores there. But my mother always shopped. There used to be A and P's in A and P, the Safeway, the uh, Acme, which they were in Elko City. But a very lot you may run short a loaf of bread and very sell mac you made own bread. But she always shopped at those stores. So, so she'd have to go all the way to Ellicott City for this area? If you wanted, if you didn't want to shop at these little stores and place and place a terrific price for herself, but she always did her shopping for an A and P or Acme because there was no Safeways in those days, and they used to have a store called the G and A, which you don't have that anymore. And A and P's now turned to Super Fresh. That's, that's, that's a long way to go. How would you get there? My, uh, my brother always had an automobile. He did. From a boy up, from a boy up, I say, for the automobile he got, he was around 16. Oh, okay. That, that made it easy. Right. Yeah, and the fella he, my father used to work for, he had an automobile and used to go in that until my brother got one and started to drive. Let me ask you about some of the, some of the, uh, in the old days, some of the uh, some of the discrimination you might have seen. I understand there were there were some like signs on things that said for white only and for colored only. That was true. Right down to our county seat, which was the old city courthouse, they even had signs for a white and colored laboratory, and the NACP got them removed. And in those days, you didn't go to you didn't go to White Tavern. It's one right down here on the road, down here on the one forty four. Charlie Abel, right until he passed the last couple of years, he had two places: one side for the white, one for the color. And I told him it's good he had it. If they were dumb enough going there, he should have had it. I said, you dumb enough going there, spend your money, you should have had it, because you don't have to go in there. Because I never went there myself, because I never drank. And it had a tavern right there at Cooksville. One had white and color. I was never in it. If somebody I want to see, I say, you going to tell so-and-so, tell them come out. I uh, just didn't bother with it. But we had that in the courthouse, huh? They did have it in the courthouse. i tell you who, you, who can tell you a lot about it was on help to get it down. Mr. Kraft was. And which minister just died out there, John West Hall. Was, he was acting, and he was on, on it. 
which he just passed. Uh, but back there, they found him dead the Thanksgiving Day. And he had all the the wealth of people of the house house that pulled in Howe County. He even had they had to set the uh, set the clock of that is filmed all of them. Little bit Bobo and all of them was at his film. Yeah, right. yeah. What's his name again? Oh, uh, John West Hollow. Oh, oh the oh, Reverend Hollow. Yeah. He, he died Thanksgiving. He, they found him Thanksgiving. He went fishing on uh, th Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and they found him Thanksgiving Day down in uh, down to uh, Pasco Park. Just this past Thanksgiving? Yes, this past Thanksgiving. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. How old was he, you know? He was 77. Was he that old? Yeah. Wow. Mm. Oh, what a shame. I, mm. I've heard a lot about Reverend Holland. Yeah, he, yeah, he was well thought of. He had a plenty of grit. You didn't tell him no. Now he has a daughter. When she finished law school as a lawyer, she worked in Clerk Smoke's office. I imagine mean, she may be still in there. Marcella Holland. Worked in Kirk, Kirk Smoke's office. That man's going to be governor someday. Yeah, yeah I think he's, he's, he's a well-educated man. Yes. To get in the way, you could have a well, you could have a good education. Know how to meet all people, and he knows how to do that. But I believe if you leave it to the governor you got, he'll never make it. I don't think Mary Schaefer wanted him to get in the front of Matter of fact, fact, they want to be, be what he got today. Yeah, probably mm -hmm. so. Let me ask you a little more about Silas Craft. Uh, his name comes up so so often when I talk with people. Um, why do you think he's considered to be the most influential black person in Howard County? Because he, he got a lot of things for them. He came here and sometime it's about forty three, I guess, as principal. And he was a man, he was a go getter. You didn't snow him down, you didn't fool him. If you told him no, he'd go somebody else. And he did a whole lot of things for the colored people. Where the rest of them didn't have a grit, he would face it. And he once was principal at a, at a college over here in uh, at Rockville. Yeah, Craft had been around. Well, now, you know him personally, obviously. Yeah. Uh, what, what is it about his, his character that people respect so? Well, he knows how to treat all, rich and the poor, the white and colored. He knows how to treat them all. If you met him with a pleasant question, he gave you a pleasant answer. If you were just the way you approach him, he approached you back. Because I know back there one night they had a meeting, and he was guest speaker, and which I guess you know, but he did now. I guess you know Charlie Miller. Charlie Miller's wife was there, and then she asked him, well, he asked us any, uh, and up a question one day, so she said to him, Solace Craft wanted to say the thing. So he answered the question the way he put it back, said, Murray Miller, does that answer your question? So that's just what type of man he was. Mm. I'm looking forward to meeting him. I haven't had Yeah, but see, he had had a heart attack. Yeah, I know. That's, that's he has a heart attack. And I was just talking to my cousin, saying he seen him yesterday down to the medical center. You see, he's a man. You can't tell it. Now, he was in Columbia Hospital, had a heart attack. The nurse told him not to get out of bed. Sorry, right not get, to get Not to get out of bed. And she told him, said, Mr. Craft, weren't you just out of bed? Didn't I tell you not to get up? Yes, I thought, I won't do it anymore. And time the woman got the door, he was out again. Hmm. Yeah, but. I understand he doesn't remember a lot of things. Oh, yes, yeah, he, he, did one, he, did one for, he did some wonderful work here in Howard County. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a, I understand the, the, the book that uh, that uh, Miss Cornelison wrote along with Yeah, they were together. Right. Yeah. I understand he doesn't remember a lot about that book. You know, I heard the same thing, but I haven't seen him, and my niece and I was going to see him, and she taken sick, so I guess I'll go to see him. Well, Kraft is a great fellow in Howard County. is well thought of. That's, that's, that's wonderful. Too, it's a shame he's taken sick now. Yes, it is. But see, like those kind of people, Something always happens to them. And just this little school up here I was telling you about burnt down. When he was principal, he said he could tell every child that started the Cooksville school because they were smarter and children come in every school. Why do you think that was? Because the teachers, the teachers we had there, three teachers, three women, they took interest in children. You come in in the morning, they want to know, you come in the morning, they tell you to take off your coat, 
with your lunch out in the afternoon to see if you had your gloves, your overshoes, and your lunch box. They were interested in the children because lots of children said they weren't teaching their mothers. They worked along with the children. And you got to work. You didn't play in there. You worked. You, you did your work. You didn't play well. You played. But they were nice. And Rachel Day, because both of them are dead now, the children honored them. If she sent children out to growing up, they said, I wouldn't do this, this, this. That was it. They never gave them no back talk. They really honored them women. So that's where the children got such a good start. You'd be surprised that children went to school what kind of job they got up there. We got lawyers, doctors, school teachers, uh, state troopers. We don't have any undertakers yet. Working head of the, uh, the girl, the one that women now is head of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the welfare. She went right to the school. Uh, Ernestine Young. Now, what school was that? Huh? What's the name of that school? It was Cooksville School. It was built in 1927. The school before that burnt down in 1927, they re reopened it again. Cooksville School? Yeah. Now, now what, what grades did that go to? In From first to seventh. And finally, they got the, uh, and back here in the 30s, one of the women was there, Mr. Snyder, kept on going and going and going to ask the, uh, Superintendent, and they got a high, got a, you know, you go one a year, you one year at the time of high school, till they finally got up to the high school. Then recently, they built Harry Tubman, and they moved it back in '49 from Cooksville to Harry Tubman. Now, was it was it uh, was it Cooksville Elementary that you attended? Yeah, it was Cooksville Elementary. It was elementary up until the change in high school, and in '49 they went to uh, no, not no '49. Yeah, it was in 49. Then they changed it back to Cookville Elementary again because the children went into Harry Tubman. used to bust them to Harry Tubman down near Simpsonville. So does Cookville Elementary still exist? It did, uh, it did until the closing in 64. Oh, because it was always an all-black school, is that Yeah, that's right. In 64, they closed and started putting children in Lisbon and different places like that. Then the uh, county... Uh, open up a garage, open up the shop and had a garage there. So the church, it really, in fact, it really belonged to the ground, really belonged to the church people in first. And the church people kept on going back and forth. So, so finally, they moved out in 78, I think it was, and gave it back to the, it gave it back to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, uh, to the church people. And it was needed to the trustees of the church. It was. I see. All right, let me change my tape here. Four years, and almost uh, six months. I went in 41, uh, August of 41, and come out in uh, November the, the 20th, 1945. What'd you do? A little bit of everything. But fight. Nothing had to do with it again. I was, too, in fact, I was inducted at Fort Meade. And I left Fort Meade, I stayed at Fort Meade from Tuesday and Saturday, I went to Fort Belvoir, Virginia, and took my basic training then. That's the reason I said I got to Louisiana. Then they sent me from there to uh, Camp Lutzen, Louisiana. And we went to basic, I went to uh, basic training again, and we were in 42. We was on a lurk and went to, uh, we went to uh, Car Cross, no, French Ruby, Canada. And from there to uh, Car Cross, Canada. From there to Skagway, Alaska. I worked on the Alcott Highway. When it started the Alcott Highway, we cut it, it started with axe saws and cut that wood and carried it off there and on the Alcott Highway. And I went from off the Alcott Highway, I went to uh, Haines, Alaska. And from Haines to Alaska, no, well, yeah, yeah, no, hey. yeah, Haines to Alaska, went up next to uh, Fairbanks, up near Nome. Mm -hmm. And we came back in 42 to Whitehorse, Canada, and Christmas of 42 was 65 below zero. Yeah. We went, every people, lots of people tell them I'm lying. We went 125 miles, but train took us 48 hours. Couldn't keep steam up. When you get the steam up, get off the out and cut ice off the rail. And we went to a cold, cold, uh, cold bay, and I stayed there that winter. Then about some cold bay in the Aleutian Islands. Mm -hmm. 
We went to Louis Islands. We put up a dam. Well, I was in I was in jail, 93rd engineer, and several engineer outfits had been there and said it couldn't be done. We didn't know it. We went up there, we started on that dam in in February, in May. Well, after that, we was in, uh, uh, you know, and we had enough water to supposed to supply 65,000 soldiers, marine, and uh, sailor. We did that. We did that. Then we came back to. Now, the, did, did, did you enlist or were you drafted? I was drafted. No, you don't enlist in nothing. I don't volunteer for nothing now. I was drafted, and we left and came back home. We got to come back to the state of Washington, and it gave us all a furlough home. We came home on furlough, went back, went to basic training again. Then we moved up from within the state of Washington, from out of California, from California to Frisco, California. That's where we got on a boat. The next time our feet hit the ground, we in India. In India? In India. You, you got around, didn't you? That's right. I've been crossed equator twice. In Lady date line, when you go across it like you go across day Tuesday, when you wake up at Thursday, you lose the whole day. Oh, day. Mm -hmm. now, uh, now, you said you served with the Army Corps of Engineers? Yeah, uh, uh, General Service Engineers it was. I worked, I was even down on Bromo Road. I worked on that. I, I did everything, I worked as every sergeant in the Army but one. That was the best sergeant you know how to cook. Hmm. I didn't know how to cook. Now, you, you didn't, did you experience any kind of, uh, of, of racial discrimination in the Army? Well, it was, yes it was, because then it, 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 it really was bad, which is until the day, I believe it was still been in there when Benjamin O. Davis' son was, uh, had that, had that airplane, had that, mm, I can't even think what I'm trying to say, had that, Mm, mm, mm. He was a colonel of the airplane. He had a squadron. And they went over there in Germany and did so much bombing. And they decided then that they would never let a colored man get all their credit. They'd mix them. And that's the reason when we went in service, we were staying in the, in the back by ourselves. We come out, we were staying together. But that's really what helped to start this and start this out. When Benjamin did about to put out somebody playing. And they said, decided that no one, let them call them back, get all that credit. We mixed them. Is that right? Mm. Mm. Now, now, the barracks and whatnot that you stayed in, they were mixed, weren't they? When we came back, it wasn't then. But it is now, because then, if you just like had wax waves, if you caught you sitting in them in a, in a line of time, a duty out, they want a court march. Now they tell me the women look so over top, men that's down the bottom. This boy is right over here, this over here, he was in high wire. And said, that's the way it was. He said, women lived up on top and lived down the bottom. I said, it wasn't like it now was in there. Well, oh, yeah, it was It was plenty of discrimination there, I'm telling you the truth. So when you went to the barracks, was it was it an all-black uh, barracks? Yes, yeah, right. That's right. Uh, 93rd engineers was all colored but the officers. They were white, but all the non we, we was all color. When we came back to the state of Washington, um, if we had been overseas for tw about almost three years, all those outfits, color outfits in, uh, in uh, Fort Lewis, Washington, had white instructors. All starting the color was white, or, or white. And they came back and told us, we told us we had went overseas all that time and came back with the same group we taking over there, if we had to have white instructors, we won't be carried out. That's the only way we didn't have them. Indeed they did. So you never served with a, with a, with a black officer? Only captain. Now I had a real nice white officer from Utah. He was first lieutenant jewel, and which is against the rules and regulation. You both drink out the same canteen bottle. He would take a drink out of his canteen bottle and hand to me, and I did the same thing. He smoked cigars and I smoked cigars. If one had a cigar, we both had a cigar, but he was acting good. We had the same mess get anything. Him and I did. But uh, when I turned him down, I had 87 points. And when he got a company, F Company in our regiment, and that was the worst company in our regiment, they'd rather fight and carry a full fuel pack and eat. 
and he made for he made a company commander. When I went and checked my clothes in and saw France, I said, "Sir," he said, "Do you hear? Do you hear me about getting me getting a getting a, a F company, a, a, a company commander F company?" I said, "Yes, sir." He said, "Sergeant France, I want you to stay here as my first sergeant." I looked at him for a while. Lieutenant Jewel, sir, realize I got 87 points. When that bull leaves for the United States, I'm gonna try to be on it. Just what I did. But I should never turn to me because that man was actually good to me. But I didn't want to stay with no Indian. Oh, uh, no. Do you, know, do you know if he was uh, was of the Mormon faith? Huh? Was he of the Mormon faith? No, he was, for, he was from Utah. No, he was. He was. He was uh, uh, but he uh, wasn't the Mormon? Uh, 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 uh. No? Because hmm. I understand the Mormons, uh, uh, who a lot of them live in Utah around Salt Lake City and whatnot, they, they've always been. Uh, no, but he was. But he wasn't. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's he was good. acting like a fellow. Yes. I'd love to run across him now. What was his name again? Jewel. How do you spell that, you know? I don't know how he spelled his name now. Yeah. But his name was Jewel, but he was good. That's great. Uh, let me ask you about uh, Prohibition times. Remember Prohibition times? Yeah, I remember. You couldn't sell whiskey. You had a blood and bootlegger. Any stills around here? Oh, yeah. Right back over on that little stream back. There were stills everywhere. I sold a minute and a half pipe bottle to a man for two cents so he could bottle of whiskey. <laughs> I hunt for <laughs> She only had to do something that day to make money. Yeah, I remember. What did you do during the Depression? I was, I was awful small. My father was working. I was awful small. But I remember it. Did, did your father ever have any trouble getting uh, staying in work during the Depression? <laughs> You see, that's what I'm going to tell you about now. That's what these little stores right here, my father was working. And the man run this store, which he did, was Fred McCrackle. All the rest of the colored man was working, was dealing with him. Let's just say, my mother always dealt with A&P. He wasn't told the man that my father wasn't dealing with it later on. And that's the truth. Hmm. Well, it's the truth. Hmm. But he, he never had too much problem getting, getting work. No, because he, he didn't mind work. He'd do anything. He was. He used to uh, wall bailer. He used to feed a bailer. He fought balls and things. This road right up here, Morgan Road up here. It's it's not too far up here from Cooksville up to, on top of the hill. They were cutting a road through there. In those days they had a seam shovel, and this very same man on top of Santa Wu, they couldn't get anybody to keep the seam up on it. So he told him, so I'll send a man up there. So he said, my father up there to look at it. So he went up there and looked at him and told him the first thing. So the trouble of this is, he said, we came before, the flues are dirty. So said, clean the flues on it, you won't have any trouble. So he went up there and cleaned the flue, and he stayed there until the job was completed. Yeah, he was, he was first class father. So was my brother, but I didn't bother. There's one job he did, I never bothered. I never liked foreign. But my brother could do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because my father would take a job, he'd go in the house and cook. Or he'd go in the house and clean and do anything like that. But my brother and I wouldn't do it. Work in no house. And he'd work on a farm. My brother and I didn't work on no farm. Mm -mm. But he'd do anything, so he'd work. He was a working man. Until he got what he wanted to do. Let me ask you about, um, about politics. You've been somewhat uh, active in, in, in politics in Howard County. I believe you used to belong to... Uh, but Republican club? That's right. They've tried to get me to come back again, but I have never went back. In fact, for two years, we only had one, the fourth precinct only one had Elizabeth. I was the director of that for, for two years. Yeah, I was in there. Right. But, but you're, not, you're not active with the Republican club? I still, I still feel like a Republican, but I, don't, I just stopped going that was all. And number one, if you out telling somebody that either one of y'all says, that's a good man, vote for it. All right, and if you get elected and you don't do anything for him, that makes me a bad fellow. So that's the reason I stop. I tell them in a minute. Oh, I used to have politicians come here to candidates and county offices. Every day, so I'm too busy together. These are the very words I tell them. I say, you want the job? I don't. I say, you want my help? I don't need your help. I tell them. And I said, thing of this, you're not doing enough for us. And I just could come out. I had a chance to be the state, a state center committee of the Republican Club for four years. I wouldn't accept it. I said, why should I go in and I'm out number? I said, you got four white, more color, what can I do? I said, I ain't doing it for my race. And I just come out. But the man, I seen him not too long ago this winter. He said, what's troubling you? Albert, you ain't got to get I said, I'll be back. 
But I still fully hate this Republican. You but, yeah, but I tell you the truth, I don't think much of our president over here because yeah. he forgets too much. Doesn't look like he's going to be president much longer. <laughs> no. But I guess it don't take a, you, you take a 50 states and you got to run 50 states, you got your hands full. You got your hands full. But I wouldn't want it. Sponsorability is great. That's the reason I never... Oh, no, I we wouldn't never stick to no former job on the railroad because I didn't want responsibility anymore. Well, the why, why was that? Why would you get to feel that way? I, well, you say you had never been in service, but you had served for 24 hours a day. You were responsible for that man regardless of what he do. He can be on a furlough or whatever he do. You should have taught him better. You were responsible. It's your baby. You the one going to blame him. He's not blame. He's in clear. You, If you had taught him in the right training, right, he wouldn't have did that. So I just got, and the same case the railroad, wherever you work as a foreman that day for 24 hours, then they can help you responsible. And I said, yeah, I can go out there and work as a tracker and make it on fine. And it was a real heavy equipment operator, I carried my own time and everything. What, what kind, back to the railroad again, what, what kind of wages is, did you earn on the railroad? Now, you may think I'm lying, but this is fact true. If I went on the railroad in 1937, they paid 40 cents an hour. And all the work was done by hand. Now they're paying around $12 an hour, and all the work is done by machinery. Now, just a little harder. Hello? Hang on a second. Get things rolling again. Yeah, yeah, Pardon me, but I had to answer the phone. Oh, sure, I understand. Why not, Chuck? Okay, yeah, we were talking about uh, wages on the railroad. Yeah, but back at I went in 37, they paid 40 cents an hour. And just like we were working, because they railroad run from, we worked from Clifton Park to Bowlingfield, Virginia. If we had to be in Bowlingfield, Virginia, if I, we were supposed to go work at 730, we had to be there at 730. And you stayed there until quitting time, which is 4 o'clock. Now, you go to headquarters. You go to trucks and you had to fetch your own transportation. You go to truck to haul you in. And you go to, it's like you go work at 730, you don't get in that truck until 730. Or else you get that truck before 730, you get time to have for it. If you was late getting back after 4 o'clock, you get time to have for it. But we didn't. Only time we got time to have, you had to work over. But you didn't get, to, you didn't get no t t time to have right up down the road. Now, everybody that works on the railroad has a special place to meet a headquarter, but we didn't. Now, just like I was a heavy equipment operator, I had a, he a headquarter. If I was up on Field F Division, I got time, I allowed, it was allowed time, time to have to travel from my headquarters up and back. When I got back to my headquarters, it cut off. That was starting in the morning or afternoon. And what would you say the wages was again? Uh, in those days, how much the wages was 40 cents an hour. You work 14 days, get $42. <laughs> but look what you could do with $42 in those days. Great day in the morning. And they used to pay off every every 13th and like, split 13th and like, that. they paid off twice a month. Now they paid off, they now pay off every 10 days. Yeah, $42 it, went a lot farther, huh? Oh, did it did. Look what you paid for a pair of shoes in those days. Right now, for the, it's no use you going to pay $40 for a pair of shoes if you're for leaving the store because they'll fall to pieces before you get out. That's where I mean the man used to work in that down in Salvage, just be that enormous shoe store down there. Because I for years, I used to wear hats, now I wear floor shine. I bought a pair of floor shine down there. I give the man $82 for them. And I was out in the rain, and my feet got wet. So I went back in and asked the man about it. He said, you're not supposed to wear me what well. I said, man, you mean to tell me I will give you $42 by a shoe? And I look at the paper and says, Ray, don't go outdoor. That man, get, uh, him and I, he give me a new pair of shoes for it. And it's how you put $42 in the ring and you can't go out your feet get wet. Him and I had that hot in heaven. I got a new pair of shoes for it. Good for you. Uh -uh. <laughs> can't go out in the ring with a new pair of shoes for $42. Mm. Uh, I, I, I give $82 for them shoes. Right there, you know. Oh, 82. $82. Oh, down goodness. here in the Nomine. I don't have the card now. They got to just give you a shoe card. Oh, yeah. And you got, you got, now you saw so much on this card for these pair of shoes you got. He told me when I, when they stopped getting it, that I had the highest average, anybody come in and bought shoes. Because mm -hmm. I didn't wear no cheap shoes. Because the best the price you pay for them now, they don't last no time. 
Because yeah. I know once your floor charge you was eight seventy five, you could wear that shoe for year and year. But now you get six good months out of you doing good. Yeah. Is, is it like that with most everything you think today? Was, were, were things made a lot better years ago than they were? They, they were. You great the years ago. $25, you bought a suit of clothes, you had something. You go out there now paying $300 for a suit of clothes, and you go out there and let it get a little cloudy, the creases fall out of them. There's no materials or nothing, not even down food. I don't know what you can remember, but my smoked sausage, you used to call it, that really was good, but now that's worthless, and bologna sausage is worth the taste of it. No, it's no quality, nothing no more. So you remember food tasting better then, too? You really did, did. You could be cooking smoke side, you could be outdoors, you could smell them on the stove. But now, you almost get them up to your mouth and don't still smell it. There's nothing to them. I don't know whatever happened to food and stuff. Do you remember, that reminds me, do you remember of, uh, of, of something that used to go on years ago called hog killing time? Many hogs my father raised for years, up until 54, the last bunch of hogs we had. My, that's what the, my father was a man would go get it. He raised his own hog. He raised his own garden. He raised his own pig. He did everything. My mother raised her own chickens, had her eggs and everything. But no, it didn't have no cow because nobody liked milk. And the next thing, I don't know who could milk the cow. Didn't like milk, but he raised his hog and killed them. Salt is meat down and smokes is meat. I'll give you, my father was a first class butcher. And my niece, the one in the hospital, used to help her. She used to measure all the salt and season for the sauce and stuff like that. And she was good. But a young girl, she was actually good. Now she works in a dietitian kitchen over at the government general hospital. Mm -hmm. But you do remember, do you remember, uh, 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 they used to call it hog killing time. Lots of folks would get together and, and sort of do it together in the, in the early. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's the truth. That's the truth. It started in about December, November was cold. Right now, my father, up to my cousin, got a big skull in town. We used to call it the hog. It's on. It's a laid up at now in the yard where you used to have to put the hogs in. And you put half of them in skull and bring them out and clean them. But now, See, they don't allow, and you'll kill your own hogs. Now you have to take them to the locker. And that's what makes people stop raising hogs. But now, they well, let's have to scald until you put the whole hog in there and scald and bring them out. So, do you remember seeing that? I do. I remember seeing it. Well, many times I throw the hog out on the board. That's all I would do. Because I didn't like to see the hog bleed. <coughs> and my brother wouldn't come nowhere near. But my father was a good butcher. Yeah. Mm. Let me ask you one last question. Over over the years, I mean, you've been here many years now. I've been here 71 years, all to about the four years and a half of the army. Yeah, well, that's, that's a lot longer than I've been here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but that's on the time I was away from here, I was in the army. Do you think, yeah, we're all right. Think, have, have, things, have, things gotten, have things gotten better for the black man in Howard County? Yes, they, in a way it has. They have a better education. In the old days, the colored man was Fred White, but nowadays a colored man is Fred White.